Um, my name is Elizabeth Silver. I'm going to be um, running this first hearing for the um, Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, before we get started, I don't I don't know if you want to just do a public comment and then David make your statement, or do you want to make it first and then go? Um, well, I guess the only statement is that because of my long time and very much appreciated relationship with Shaw and his company Sunwood Development. Uh, I will need to recuse myself from this first matter, but the board is well and ably represented in my absence by the rest of you. And so I think what I'll probably do is, is mute myself and, and uh, turn off my video. And then when the uh, second matter comes up on the agenda, I will come back in and Elizabeth will be stepping out. Um, and, uh, I think that's the only thing I need to, uh, to say right now, and I'll just get out of your way and you can proceed. Well, actually, I, I wonder if David, you should stay in the meeting long enough for us to ask if there's anybody else who has anything to say on topics that have not, are not to do with this meeting. Just well, e either I could start that or Elizabeth could just to, you know, right, right. Um, Elizabeth, do you have a preference? Do you want me I to? I don't care. You go, go for it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and open the hearing of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, notice of this hearing was published on October 31st and November 7th. Uh, there are two items on the agenda. Present uh, 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 for the first uh, matter on the agenda are Maureen Scanlon, Elizabeth Silver, Aaron Irvin, and myself, I believe, although... I will be recusing myself from that first matter. Um, um, I think I just said that uh, this hearing is being recorded, video recorded. Um, and we always start with uh, an opportunity for members of the public, if any, to uh, comment or make comments to the board on matters other than those matters that are on the agenda for tonight's hearings. Um, so I will go ahead and ask if uh, there, or maybe ask Nathan to confirm whether there are any members of the public here, and if we, if they, if they're in, and if if so, do any members of the public want to address the board on comments or matters unrelated to the two items on the agenda, one of which is sixty. Um, Prince Street in Northampton, and the other is 354 South Street in Northampton. Did yes, we... David, somebody just literally entered in address speaking. Zoe, Zoe Rumanoff, I'll let the person in. Zoe, Zoe Rumanoff came in. Okay. And we might have to ask the person if... Um, okay. Does, and... it could, could we ask that individual if they are here to listen to or comment on or ask questions about the applications pending tonight regarding 60 Prince Street or 354 South Street, or are they here because they would like to make a public comment to the board that is unrelated to those two agenda items? I'll unmute the person asked to unmute. So, so if you have any comments, um, you can make it now for the other matters outside the agenda. Um, it's probably, I think, probably Zoe. Is. Yeah. Yep, Zoe, that's right. Um, okay, um, if Zoe has no comment. Okay. I have no comment. Oh, okay, thank you. So in that case, in that case, I think I'll turn the gavel over to Elizabeth. As stated, I uh, have uh, uh, a conflict because of a long-time relationship with the applicant uh, on the first matter, Sunwood Builders. So I will step back and recuse myself, and I will rejoin the group after you've completed the hearing on uh, 60 Prince Street. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. See you in a bit. All right, so this okay. is the hearing for a special permit for an oversized directional sign by Sunwood Builders at 60 Prince Street, map ID 38A-012, record ID LU2434. Uh, hearing publication dates 1031 and 117. Uh, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals that will be hearing this um, 
this hearing. I'm Elizabeth Silver. We'll be joined by Maureen Scanlon and Erin Irvin. Erin, welcome. This is, I know, your first meeting, so uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions if anything come up that you're not familiar with. Um, so tonight we need to have, uh, in order for the request for the special permit to be allowed, we need to have a supermajority vote, which means that all three of the members here of the board tonight must approve the request. Um, the board must find that the architecture of the building, the location of the building or the land or nature of the use being made of the building or land is such that additional signs or signs of a larger size, which I believe is what we're looking at here, would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest. Um, so we'll first hear from the applicant. Um, if I could just clarify this other person, Zoe, um, if, is that your name? Are you here for this particular hearing? Um, I'm just a student at Smith College. Um, I'm observing for educational purposes. Okie doke. Very good. Well, welcome to the hearing and nice to have Thank you. you. Um, okay, so if the applicant would uh, make a presentation, I think you can assume that we've read the materials that are before us, but if you want to do a summary of the request and if you could specifically address um, why the sign, the larger sign that you're requesting would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest, that's where our standard is. So um, in addition to what you're requesting, if you could uh, specify how it meets that standard, that'd be great. Uh, you're muted. Hello. Um, um, good evening. I'm Shaw Perry from Sunwood Builders. And um, if I may open up the conversation by saying that just potentially because of just the technicality of not understanding the regulation, we were under the assumption that the signs were already approved by virtue of the special permit or the permit that process that we went through with the planning department and our plans and specifications showed the sign and we moved ahead uh, ordering that sign and installing it on the building only as later on to understand that there's potentially a conflict and we had to put in an application with a fee to uh, meet with you and discuss the applicability of the sign. At that time, reviewing the regulations, we realized that there is a potential of way of looking at the plan, at the sign that would uh, be in excess of the space that is allowed by the code. And just to make things simple and clear uh, and uh, to present to have the presentation just done shortly, I we hope that if you were to display the sign without the distances between the letters, because unlike regular signs, it is just the background is the building. So in a way, the canvas is the full size of the building. And if you were to uh, look at the actual dimensions of the outside of the letters and you combine that, the space that is allotted for the sign representing the letters is, I believe, agreeable with uh, uh, complying with the regulations. However, as it states now, if you were to measure top to bottom, that is the, a different measurement. So um, I think that in to keep it short, this is, uh, I think, uh, the gist of it. If I could answer any other questions, uh, I'd be happy to. Yeah, um, I appreciate your comments. And I can assure you that um, we understand what happened and why. And so we know we're looking sort of retrospectively at this, but that's not a concern. We're still looking at what it is in relation to the standard that the board has to, to look at. So um, we appreciate you're saying that and understand it. So uh, don't worry about that. Um, and I do think that in terms of the size itself, 
I appreciate, you know, I, I've seen the sign, the, the, the sign, I know, you know, what you're talking about in terms of each individual letter, which is separate from each other, but I think we have to look at the overall size. Um, but I, I still think we can look at that in, in relation to the standard that we have. So, um, so do you want to, um, so to give us a little more specifics about the sign itself, whether or not it's being lit. I know, you know, I think your materials covered some of that, but just to review a little bit more about the, yeah. the, the sign itself and where it is in relation to the facade of the building, you know, I understand it's set yeah. back a little bit. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So one, first, maybe I'll address the uh, 60 Prince sign on the uh, apartment building. And uh, that sign is located right, sort of uh, almost directly below the front door. It represents the address of the building. And also we call the project as a whole 60 Prince based on its address. And um, the sign was designed originally, as you've probably seen, with an LED soft lighting with LED behind the letters. Um, the sign could be seen directly in front of the building. I think there's a particular angle by which you miss that sign because uh, it's recessed between the two portions of the building. So it is somewhat obscured, but uh, if you are in a parking lot looking at the building, it would be right in front of you. It's in the center of the building and it's uh, comparatively somewhere between, the, I think, the second floor around area, maybe a little bit higher than that into the third floor. Um, the other son, Sunwood, it's... Uh, Can I stop you there just for a second? Sure. Um, so I had been under the impression there would not be any lighting behind that. Is that incorrect? The, the sign was designed to be lit. However, <clears throat> as a part of the permitting process, we were asked uh, to eliminate the lighting. But as it was built, it was built with lighting built into it. And, and that was um, the electrician wired it. And but it, it could be shut off. Elizabeth, Nathan is has some input. Sorry. OK, Nathan. Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, so to clarify, I think there was some miscommunication. I, I was uh, mainly communicating with Chris at Sunwood. I explained to him that while lighting for signs is allowed, it has the additional um, 350-12 lighting requirements, so it needs to comply. And uh, he he said that, you know, right now, I guess based on complex and other factors, he, they plan to then not turn off the lighting and not have the lighting in place. So it's not that I didn't tell him to not have the lighting. I just told him that there are audition requirements. And Michelle, just to clarify, so these are two different signs we're looking at. We are, the ZBA is only looking at the 60 Prince Street sign. Um, the, the other Sunwoo sign, that's compliant. That's a business sign that's allowed by right. Um, based on the drawing you submit or Chris submitted, it's allowed by right. So that's not under the consideration board. It's only the 60 Prince Street sign, which, which is considered a oversized residential directional sign. It's not a business sign because it's on a residential building. So uh, uh, you don't need to present the Sunwood sign. You just need to present the 60 Prince Street sign. And I can share the, the uh, files you submitted on the screen if you want and the, if the board wants. So I can share the screen. But, um, so that's, <laughs> that's my comment just to clarify. And uh, no, thank you. OK. So just to be clear, there won't be lighting behind this, right? I would, I would hope that that's a part of the, con the consideration. The fact, if I understand it correctly, the, lit, the, the sign has been lit for the last maybe three, four weeks. And that was the electrician turned it on and Honestly, I just see it now because uh, before before the the weather changed, 
uh, I would leave the office at day, late daylight and would never see the sign. But the last few days, if I stayed late at the office, I found out that the light was actually on. Okay. All right. So it's physically could be turned off. Okay. This this is new information, at least in terms of what I was reading in the um, files we received. Was that lighting was not to be? Is, is it okay, Elizabeth? If I did you yeah, have yeah, more yeah, things no, you want to ask? Yes, yeah, please. Okay. So what I had read in reviewing the documentation presented was that uh, you, and I may have misunderstood this, but that you had you were not considering lighting based on cost and um, complexity of installation. So I, this is new information to me to consider that lighting is even a, a, a on the table as a possibility, which I think is an additional factor that we need to consider as part of, you know, the, uh, it's typical that we do consider that as part of a sign that, will require a special permit based on not simply the size, but if I understand correctly, Nathan, all the, also the position of it, you know, that it's, that it's quite high up from ground level. Right. Yeah. So, um, so uh, to child applicant and the board to clarify, a directional sign is allowed by right. If it's six square feet or less, this sign is well above that. Um, and so that brings some additional complications when you introduce lighting, because you're putting lighting mm -hmm. on an oversized sign that's much larger than normal allowed. And the updated zoning ordinance for lighting this beginning of this year, it has a lot of um, consideration for reducing or preventing glare. And actually, I just looked at the plan uh, this morning and I realized if there was lighting, because there are windows, um, it, it's recess inside the building, but, you know, or it's cupped, it's surrounded by windows of the building. So, I mean, glare is a potential factor combined with the fact this is an oversized sign. And I will just read uh, my communication with uh, Chris from Sunwood. Um, I, I understand there might be some miscommunication or different ways of looking at it, but I'll just read what he said, okay? Um, the Sunwood signs, the Sunwood, oh, and actually he does mention, oh, okay, I see. Um, I think, I, okay, I'll just read it. Um, he says, Sunwood, the Sunwood science illumination ability has been disconnected, and we have decided not to move forward with the light ability for the 60 print sign. Our concern is that including and maintaining the light function within the sign will result in a requirement for another costly light study. We are hoping to simplify the board's decision and make it easier to approve the sign. Would this be acceptable? This is when we're discussing about the, the, the different signs and the lighting, um, lighting questions. This was via our email on October 3rd. Okay, so from that, it sounds like they're not asking for any lighting. So if we approve this, Nathan, today without the lighting and they want to do lighting, do they, will they need to come back? I, that's my understanding because it's an oversized sign. You're, you're, uh, I mean, I think it's sort of more up to the, the, uh, the interpretation of the building commissioner and the supporting staff from our office, but because it's lighting, that's updating an oversized sign already, you know, typically like updating a, a, a by right standard size sign, you know, doesn't require a lot of additional special permitting, but when you're making a, a potential significant modification to already an oversized special permit is sign that um, might trigger an additional special permit review. Maybe kind of maybe comparable to other special permitting uh, reviews you the board did in for other oversized signs in the past. Okay, so, so now there seems to be a little inconsistent. I'm sorry. Let me just stop for a second. Aaron, I saw that you had your hand up before. Did you have a question you wanted to ask? I was just wondering, I'm sorry that I didn't actually get over there to physically see the uh, building. Is there is there any kind of a visual that we can put on the screen so that we can see what we're talking about? Yes, I can I can put it up right now if the board is fine or wants to. I'll put it up. Yes, yeah. that'd be great. Okay. I was able to stop by, but there is, you have a photograph that in the files uh, folder that represents yeah. it quite well. 
Yeah. So, so it sounds like there's, while you're looking for this, Nathan, it sounds like there's a little conflict between what Chris was saying and what Shoal is saying now. So I, I'm not sure which to go with. Shoal? Is that how you it? I would appreciate if we retract back to not requesting, not talking about lighting and assume that there is no lighting from this day forward. Okay. That's fine. I, it could go either way. It's just we want to be clear which way we want to go. I so think that that's more of in compliance with the letter that Nathan read. And I would just yeah. agree that that possibly is more manageable way to handle this and therefore we can eliminate that. Okay. And that doesn't preclude you from coming back at some later time if there Maybe is a someday in the future, but we would just assume it's not there. Okay. So I, you know, I did go by, I've seen this many times and I, I see that it's recessed and it's on the front of the building and it is the second to third floor as you're describing. And yeah. So I don't know how much that recess is. I forget. I, I know we had the, the uh, dimensions in a different f uh, diagram, but I don't recall what they were. I think it's roughly uh, at least five feet from the site plan that was submitted to the planning board, about and five feet true. at least. Yes, and it's true that as soon as you go by this building, just even a little bit, you don't see that anymore because the building, of course, is this the, the right part is we're looking at it, it juts out and same with the left. So I was going off to the right, but it's the same with the left. So Yeah, it's a little more visible from the left. I don't know why, but well, a little more. So, But to your point, um, but I, I have a couple of questions or can we uh, go? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. move on that. Um, so this is considered a directional sign because it points people to where to the location. Um, it's also to me, I mean, honestly, as a designer, I think it's a very creative choice. <laughs> but um, do you anticipate coming back with other more sort of functional directional signs? Or will this be, is is this it? Is this the signage you envision for the building? Well, I don't- Will there be other like If we can interrupt here, Maureen, I'm not sure. I mean, all we're dealing with right now is this one sign. Is, right, is this one So sign. I don't okay. know that we need to really be that concerned with what might or might not happen with some other signs later, because they'd obviously have to come back if they wanted to add. Yeah. You're so, right. You're right. I think, yeah. I'll retract the question, except I, I don't think I would have got there if not for the fact that we arrived at this at an unfortunate stage, right? Where they've already had uh, somehow some skip in communication with the city on permitting. So I don't, I would like to, you know, guard you from having to go through something like this again. Makes sense. All right. Are there yeah. other questions that um, Aaron or Maureen have for Shoal before? No. There are a number of people that have recently just joined us, and I don't know if any of them are here for this particular hearing. Um, Shoal, is there anything else you wanted to add before we checked in to see if other people had any other comments? Okay. If you feel that you want me to give you rough dimensions of the recess element of the sign where it's located in the building, I could say that it's more or less a recess eight feet on the right and roughly 12 feet on the left. As we're looking at it? Yeah. As you can see, when we're looking at it, there's the wall on the right is offset a little bit differently and there's it's more or less eight feet or so on the right side and maybe 12 on the left. Yes, it's it's not perfectly symmetrical, which makes it more interesting, I think. Um, all right, um, thank you. I don't think I need any more specific um, dimensions than that. Um, is there anybody who's joined this hearing recently who wanted to make, or, or actually before I do that, Nathan, were there, there any public comments from uh, the city on that? 
is there there are zero public comments I received and there are um no comments from DPW. Okay. And uh, so if anybody here wants to make a public comment, uh, please raise your hand. I um I didn't make anybody else co host due to Zoom bombing issues. So okay. if you please raise your hand if you want to comment. So we had a couple people. I think this one of the two is somebody for the second hearing, and I'm not yes. sure. Mm -hmm. Mitch. Okay. Yeah, Mitch, right. Mitch is the applicant for the okay. next. Okay. All right. All right. So I don't think we have any additional comments for this particular hearing. Right. Um, so if there aren't any more questions, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing, and then we can have a discussion. Uh, I would uh, move to close the public hearing. Do I need to give the specifics? Um, no, this is just the first stage. And then yeah. we can move on. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so, Shoal, once we close the public hearing, we're not going to be able to hear from you anymore. I think you've covered the bases, but if there's anything you want to add before we vote on this motion, now would be the time. The consideration. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Uh, roll call, Nathan. Yes. Uh, by roll call, Elizabeth. Yes. Maureen. Yes. And Aaron. Yes. So um, we could either have discussion first and then a motion or a motion and then discussion, whatever you prefer. Uh, let's get the discussion points over with. So when we move, we move. OK. Um, <laughs> My only thought is, uh, do we or could we or should we set a condition about lighting or just have that as part of the uh, motion to uh, approve, which is where I think we are headed? I, I, I probably would suggest not doing that. I think that's not a request that's before us. So it's sort of a preemptive condition that probably is not necessarily appropriate for um, yeah. this right now. That would be my sense. Um, I, I, be, yeah, I mean, that would be like a whole discussion on lighting without a request for lighting. So I think it would probably be better if we maybe save that for if they come back. So we can... have set conditions for lighting in the past, but I don't know how this I get your point, Elizabeth. That makes sense because it's not on the table. But um, right now Nathan, you raised your hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, something just quick. Yeah, I mean, if if the board doesn't want to create a strict condition, but maybe I can just put something note in the findings that in the findings section of the the permit decision saying applicant has or uh, applicant is not requesting lighting, or applicant stated that they will not have lighting on the sign. At least in relation to this application, yes, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 as you know, I'm new here, um, but it does seem like it, it is currently in the public record that the the applicant has said that yes, there is lighting, and no, we will not use it. And um, uh, barring any reason to doubt that, we should just leave it be. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I say. think. I think I would agree. <laughs> with that. Um. And on the merits comments, or do you want to make a motion and then we can comments or not? Maureen, you want to offer a motion? Sure. No. Um, I move that we approve the request for a special permit for an oversized directional sign by Sunwood Builders at 60 Print Street. Map ID 38A012, record ID LU2434, um, as requested, uh, with notes as uh, included in the findings based on based on this meeting, based on this request. I also would like to make make note in the findings that this is. Uh, that this sign is already installed. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, but the motion itself is to approve the request. The motion is, my motion is to approve, yeah. And Aaron, is there a second? No, second. Okay. Um, I, I would, I just wanted to say for the record that I would, I'm gonna be voting for this. 
Um, I recognize that there was a miscommunication in what happened with the sign being up prior to the hearing itself, and I, I don't hold that against the applicant at all. Um, and having been by there and seen the building and you know seen the general um, neighborhood, I think that the sign that's very, as, as Maureen said, designed very lovely, <laughs> love the lovely design, creative design, um, and fits perfectly within that recess of the building that um, it's it will not detract from the neighborhood. There's really not that much like right there. There's things around it, but right where it is, is there's not much else. And it certainly doesn't detract. And I think in the public interest, showing where uh, the building is and the entrances makes sense. So I think that um, I would be supporting it for those reasons. And if there are any other comments, feel free. Otherwise, we agree can... with all you said. Yeah. Okay. All right. So are we ready for a vote? Yeah. Uh, it's ready to vote. Uh, by roll call, um, Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. And Aaron? Yes. Okay. All right. We're all set. Um, you can follow up with Nathan, Joel, about any follow up activities necessary. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate uh, the consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for that pretty building. Yeah, thank you, Shell, for really good reuse of a an interesting, odd little parcel of land. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on top of that, I, I feel really fortunate to be able to uh, locate our office there as a part of the design, and yep. it works so well for us. So really proud of it and enjoy working out of it. I'm in this building right now. Oh, good. <laughs> well, welcome. Yeah. It looks lovely. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. So I am back. I turn over the gavel to you. Okay. Thank you. So the second item I know um, we're uh, that was set for 550, 10 yes. minutes to six. So we're good on timing and appreciate the patience of the applicant and anyone else who's here for the second matter on the agenda. Again, for people who weren't here before, I'm David Bloomberg. Um, I will be uh, one of the voting members of the board for this second agenda item, along with um, Maureen Scanlon and Aaron Urban, the other two members. And, and of course, we have Nathan Chung here from the City of Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing staff support. Um, so again, for the second hearing, we will, um, uh, before I introduce the matter as a reminder, we will first hear from the applicant or the representative of the applicant. And we will then um, give the board members a chance to ask any questions about the application as presented. After that, if there are members of the public here who would like to comment on or ask questions about this matter, they'll have an opportunity to do so. I'll ask that anyone who comments, uh, first give your name and address for the record that's being kept. As a reminder, this uh, hearing is also being video recorded. Um, and after public comment on this matter, uh, the board will determine if it has enough information to vote to close the public hearing. After that vote, uh, we can no have no longer hear any input from the applicant or the public. So we have to make sure that's all completed first. And then uh, presumably after that, the board will have a discussion and determine if it's going to vote tonight on the matter. Normally we do uh, the same night. Um, so the second matter, yes, Nathan, something, question? Oh, hi, hi, um, hi, hi, sorry to interrupt, David. Um, I, I will, forgive me if you did already, but uh, did you ex did you read the agenda for this matter? The second yes, matter? I'm going to do that right oh, now. Oh, I'm the sorry. second matter is uh, an app a, a request for a, a finding uh, with respect to an addition to a house with non-conforming setbacks submitted by Valley Home Improvement for property at 354 South Street, map ID 38C-039. And uh, the record ID number is LU2435. And as a reminder to the board and the applicant, a finding requires a simple majority vote of two of the three members in favor. And it's a discretionary permit. 
And in the case of a finding under section 350-7.2 D and M, um, the board has to make a determination that the proposed change and expansion or alteration of a pre-existing non-conforming use or structure are not substantially more detrimental to the characteristics of the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming uh, conditions of the structure or use. Um, again, notice of this hearing was published October 31st and November 7th, uh, 2024. So with that, uh, we, we will now ask the applicant or the representative of the applicant to uh, present a brief uh, summary of the request for the finding that has been submitted to us. And again, if people could I give your name and address for the record before they speak. Thanks. Um, hi, <clears throat> I'm Mitch with um, Valley Home Improvement. And um, the I guess I'm, to describe the project, do, does everybody see the site plan? Do they have that, Nathan? Or? Uh, so, I mean, I can share it on the screen if you wish. Sure, yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, Please. great. Uh, actually, uh, <clears throat> uh so, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, sorry for the wait. Okay, just coming up, just loading. All right. So, do you want to go to the second page? Um, Where the second page five. Page five. Yeah, this one. Or is page? Uh, yep, this one right here. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the existing house um, is in the green and the purple. Um, so the green and the purple is the existing house. And we are proposing to add an addition on the red section and rebuild the purple set of stairs. So the existing um, purple section is Deb's uh, stairs from the back of her house, from her driveway into her kitchen. And um, the red space that we're proposing to build is a um, living room um, with a deck as well. There's a little bit of that area in the red that will also be an outdoor deck. Um, you know, Deb came to me looking to have a little more space for her home. Um, she's also, you know, says South Street's pretty busy and noisy and would like to be able to spend a little bit more time in a little bit more private area um, for her home. And uh, so this was the design that that we came up with. Um, and yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, any questions from board members? Well, I, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to clarify for the record that there's no additional non-conforming setback issue that we're looking at. Um, the stairs are going to stay on the same footprint and the addition doesn't change the setback issues that already exist. Is that correct? Yes, that, yes, that is correct. The stairs are currently one foot from the property line, um, mm -hmm. and they will be built on the same exact footprint and our addition will be about four feet from the property line. Okay. And um, I understand, I've read through the materials, I understand that the triangle next to it, uh, it, the ownership is unclear, but there's a right of way in there and that nobody in over 20 years, <clears throat> seems like that triggers some adverse possession there, but that's just, <laughs> nobody said anything in those in that period of time, but that if they rise up and do that, there's other options for parking. So that's not an issue, is that accurate? Um, I'm not sure everything's accurate until you said that there's other options for parking. Um, I guess I'm not sure if I, uh, I'm not sure if I could say that there are. Um, I thought I read that. Am I, Nathan, am I making something up oh. in my head or did I actually read that? The way I read oh. it was that there was an, op there was opportunity in front for one car and that they could put parking out back if they continued to have the right of way but couldn't park there <laughs> but i don't know what how relevant any of that is for us is it yeah i mean for quick clarification i sorry miss if you have you look very befuddled that was my my opinion that um so i have to be careful that because it is a right of way 
uh, in theory, if the app, if the owner of the next property says you can't park here anymore, the right of way still allows them to use that to pass into that property. And the rear of the property, I know it's just like relatively tiny space, but based on the current um, open space remaining calculation you provided, there is a potential possibility for uh, uh, you know the, another parking space. It's about okay. it's about about 156 square feet. That's a standard parking space. So it you know it's very tight. But uh, it's kind of a worst case scenario, and again, I, I you know, I, it might be very challenging in some physical ways. But I, I just mentioned as a possibility. I'm sorry if I gave the impression that it's a definite option presented by the applicant. It was just my opinion. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? No, I think it's very clear and clearly presented. Right, and and I. Well, why don't we see? Are there are there any members of the public who wanted to address this application or request for a finding? I will stop share. Let me check. Um, Zoe, um, I, I if I can ask you to unmute if you want to comment anything. There is one member of the public. Oh, did I? I don't have any comments. Thank you. Hold on. Thanks. So, and that's the only member of the public here, I gather. Um, the and 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 uh, Nathan, have we had any feedback or comments or concerns from DPW or any other municipal offices? There was no comment from DPW, and there were zero public comments. Okay, and um, I know that we uh, the you know it. The in, in the in the simplest sense again, it, what we're tasked with doing is deciding if we can f are able to find that these improvements, as proposed, would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the current conditions. So, and I take it, Nathan, we haven't received anything from any abutters' uh, comments uh, for or against. Yeah, no, okay. Um, okay. no zero comments. Yeah. Okay. And just for Aaron's edification, the uh, the applicant is always required to give notice to a list of abutters, not just abutters, but people within, I believe, 300 feet of any boundary. And that gives people the opportunity to comment or appear or send an email or a letter. And um, apparently nobody uh, uh, has done that. I don't know. Um, can't don't know what conclusions to draw from that, but but nobody has felt strongly enough or otherwise to comment. Um, if there isn't any other questions from the board, no members of the pub public who want to comment, uh, I guess then the question is, is the board comfortable closing the public hearing after which we cannot have any more input with the applicant or anyone else? If so, we could have a motion to close the public hearing. You moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, I guess I got confused. Um, Elizabeth, I thought for some reason you weren't going to be here for the second one. So I think that must mean that Maureen, Elizabeth, and I are the three voting members, but we always welcome the input and comments and questions of the associate member, even if, in this case, Aaron is not voting on this matter. Um, so uh, I guess we could just have a roll call vote on the motion, which has been seconded to close the public hearing, please, Nathan. Yes, I will. Uh, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. And Maureen? Yes. Okay, so the public hearing's closed. And are we ready for a motion? I'll just say that I personally have no problem with this application. Um, I, I agree with, I don't, don't remember if it was Maureen or Elizabeth who suggested that the issues with parking, <clears throat> I think, are more of a concern to the applicant than to us. Um, as I'm seeing it, they do have, as already been stated, and according to the record, they do have a right of way over that property, that adjacent parcel, but without an explicit right to park vehicles on it, which could be considered interfering with the owner's rights uh, or an uh, undue uh, burden on the easement. Um, however, this appears to be a, what what we real estate lawyers call an orphan parcel. Nobody, Literally no one, including the city of Northampton, even knows who owns it. Last known was the electric company. They deny that they own it. So I just, I think that's, I, I don't think any of, as I see it, none of that pertains to the question before us, which is do these improvements 
are they, would they be substantially more detrimental? And I personally don't think they would be. So if we're ready for a motion on the um, request for the finding, we could entertain that. I move that we approve the request for a, a permit for an addition to the house at 30, 354 South Street, map ID 38C 039, um, as it is not more, it is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non conforming aspects of the house. Okay, and do we have a I'll, second? I'll, I'll second. There's a second. And is there any any discussion? If not, we can take a roll call vote. I'm happy. I, I'll, I'll weigh in and add to what you said, David. That uh, it's clear that the property, including that adjacent right of way area, is being really well maintained by mm -hmm. this by the applicant. And I see only you know uh, positive uh, impact on the, the way that property is being like landscaped and cared for. So I, I can't imagine there being a concern. I, I agree. Um, okay, so thank you. So I guess we can have a roll call vote on the motion to grant the finding, the request for the finding. Yes, by roll call, David. Yes. And Elizabeth. Yes. And Maureen. Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. Good luck with the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds great. Thank, thank you great. very much. Have a great night. Good. And I, I know that thank Valley Thank you Home for the care in your yeah. application. I appreciate oh, that. And I know Valley Home Improvement knows the drill about uh, there's a 20 day appeal period after the decision is reported and yep. delivered to the town clerk, city clerk before uh, the building inspector normally would issue the building permit. But I know you're familiar with that. Yep. So um, good. So I think that's finished for that's all for the agenda items. Um, but we do have a one set of uh, minutes, I think, to approve. And also maybe now we can take a breath and give a proper welcome to Aaron. But why don't we do the minutes first, if if that makes sense? Um, and that those were the minutes from July. Oops, that's not right. July twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. I guess I was not there. Nope. Um, I'll move that we approve those minutes. Okay. Any uh, a second, or does anyone have any comments? Either. I don't think I'll I did. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. So did Elizabeth who moved to who first moved to approve the minutes? I did. Elizabeth. Okay. I think, okay. Yeah. I, I couldn't hear you clear. Okay. Great. Um. So uh, roll call. Yeah. Is, or anybody commenting on? Uh, I think sorry. not me. I think we're. I, yeah. I think we're ready for roll call, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, by roll call. Um. David. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Maureen. Yes. Okay. Good. So that's unanimous. So the minutes are approved. <clears throat> Only other agenda items. I think our, if if, if we have any update uh, for all of our information, including Aaron's now, uh, on future uh, hearing dates, Nathan, do we know anything yet? Not, um, nothing has come in. So I think it's relatively safe to say you're good for another month. There will be no hearing at least. And actually, actually entire <laughs> because 26th is, is a kind of a part of the holiday. So I think for the entire month of December, uh, it's safe to say there will be nothing. And next, the next one this month on the 28th, there's nothing that's come in. So Okay, so not before January. Yeah, but not before Maybe January. Thanksgiving so, anyway, so. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So, um, yeah. I'm going to be, uh, that's good for me because I'm going back to London for December. I was there in October. Oh, um, okay. Were you my, actually there? But, oh. What's that? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> um so now we can if aaron are you still with us if we <laughs> um uh we we do want to welcome you and and express our appreciation for your willingness to devote yourself to this modest public service um um and uh yes. if you have any questions let us know i i know that you will be required like all of us to do an online course on conflict of interest laws ethics et rules of ethics as they apply to to people who are in this case uh members of a board of appeals it's confusing because we're actually considered special employees even though we obviously don't get paid anything um for purposes of the um conflict and the ethic ethics rules that apply um and it's very important to make sure that we all are on top of those and well-versed um, on when uh, and how to avoid a conflict or even the appearance of a conflict of interest. 
Um, and there are all kinds of different scenarios that could crop up. Um, and also, um, we do, we do, uh, I know when I came on here, I, it's, I know Mary Ford was mayor, whenever that was, um, the, um, uh, we were, rem I was reminded that it's, it's very helpful whenever possible to, to try to drive by the properties where we have applications pending before the hearing, uh, just cause it's so much better to, um, um, see them with our own eyes. It's all part of sort of the volunteer service that we're trying to provide here. Um, it's not always possible, but, uh, but it's a, it's a good idea where it is possible. Anyone else have any words of wisdom for Aaron since we've already submitted Aaron to trial by fire here? <laughs> <laughs> Just welcome. It's great to have you yeah. with us and Same. So welcome. working with you. And you. I uh, learned some things um, I wouldn't say the hard way, but just by you know, uh, test like trying to figure out how to best navigate things. And I have found that the uh, Nathan and before him Carolyn have been very useful when I when I'm saying I have this question: What's appropriate to ask? You know how like how how to not cross a line inadvertently with um, like we don't communicate with each other outside of here, but sometimes there's questions we might have. And I've, I have found Nathan enormously helpful. Yeah, that's, I agree. Thank you for uh, mentioning that. Also in that regard, that reminds me that not only do we need to be properly versed on the rules for conflict of interest, but also the open meeting statute, which is part of what you're alluding right. to, Maureen. Right. We cannot have as board members conversations, at least if it looks like it's a quorum, but to be safe, none at all about um, any of the matters that are appearing before us. Um, what we can do, and again, I think Maureen was alluding to this maybe, is we can each separately communicate directly with Nathan. That's perfectly right. acceptable. Right. Uh, but not copying each other uh -huh. and not talking to each other because it could violate the open meeting statute, which provides that deliberations of a municipal body have to occur only after formal publication and notice and with an opportunity of, for the public to attend and observe and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's the other key thing to get up to speed on is the open meeting statute and as it applies to us. But the shortest version is we're, we really can't even talk or email or text each other um, about matters that are pending before us because of the risk of violating that statute. And those emails are discoverable. People, you read these articles in the newspaper from time to time. Where, um, but what we can always do is communicate individually, one-on-one, -on -one, directly with Nathan, either by email, phone, or whatever. Nathan, Nathan I'm stating that correctly, yes? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah. And David, um... This is a kind of a different matter, but why do you think about a member is just socializing outside of these matters? Well, in a small town, it's impossible to avoid, really. I mean, uh, and um, so I think it's OK to socialize. It's just that you can't and, and not just with members, but with members of the public who may have an application coming or pending or may have comments on an application. Somebody says to you at a picnic or a party, oh, I saw so and so has applied to do this. Isn't that your board, you know, that that's you're going to be hearing that the 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 only appropriate answer is I'm not able. I mean, you don't have to be rude about it, but I'm not able to to talk about it because I think that's the only safe response. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't mean to split hairs. We're all lawyers. Here, mm -hmm. but We're not I, all lawyers. Well, <laughs> but, you know. You're right, David, and you err on the side of caution always. Um, but what the conflicts and open meeting laws go to are conversations on the merits of a case. So if we were to talk about scheduling a hearing, that's a good point. It's not a problem. Yeah, logistical and, things are fine. Right. And if somebody was to say to you, I mean, there are hearings that come up that are public notice about the hearings. So to say, if somebody asks 
if there's a hearing on this issue coming up, the answer can be yes without any concern whatsoever. The problem is if you then go further beyond and start talking about the merits of the issue. But yeah. the fact of its existence yeah, yeah. And, is and I, yeah. Right. So, and I was, again, speaking as a lawyer, you're right. I was, I was ambiguous there. You can acknowledge that there's a hearing. Um, when I said no comment, I meant on the substance of the hear hearing or the substance of the application. Uh, but yes, you can acknowledge there's a hearing and you can and we can communicate among ourselves if it strictly relates to logistical things like, are you going to be available for that day for the hearing? Because I'm not available, you know. Right. Although it is helpful and Nathan is very, very good about coordinating all those logistics. So that also can can generally does go through Nathan or come from Nathan. Did you have any other questions, Aaron, about uh, anything? Uh, not currently. No, I have a big stack of papers that I got this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. open meeting laws and, <laughs> and all yeah. like that. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll do my due diligence and study. Yeah. And, um, I will say, I mean, I, I have managed to live in this town for 25 years without socializing with any of you. I was yeah. When I meant I meant more with relating to applications <laughs> Sad, than sadly, board members. I think, probably my loss. Right. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to um, um, proceeding forward. And you know, it. it I, I. I'm just a geek. I think it's fascinating stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's def. We definitely share all yeah. share that. I think, or we <laughs> right. wouldn't be here. Welcome to that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I will say an early confusion I had that actually took a little while to sort out was ended out that there was some uh, piece of code that uh, bylaws that I had never received that explained the distinctions between the associate members and the full members, uh -huh. but, and that was. Um, when I finally asked the right question to Carolyn, she said, oh, <clears throat> I think you didn't get that uh, that uh, set of bylaws. We were looking at a change to it. And I'm like, now I understand. So I will just uh, say that that's information I should have known existed and should have looked for and didn't, which was basically that there were three full members and two associate members. And hopefully that has all been shared with you. But I didn't understand that for quite some time. Okay. Right. And some boards are different than others, but our board, we've, as I said during the hearing, we've always welcomed the full input of the associate member, whether they're voting on that matter or not. And we just, all the more, the more, the better in terms of input and responses and sharing ideas and stuff. Um, and eventually, associate members become members when, as members leave and so on. I should also add, in terms of dating myself, that when I joined, David Narkowitz was an associate member <laughs> before he joined the or got elected to the city council. Uh -huh. um, so um, uh, I think that's it. If if that's it, then and uh, we could uh, just have a motion to adjourn, which is how we end each meeting for the record. So moved. Okay, and, and second. a second. Okay. okay, so roll call. And the reason we, uh, Aaron, we do roll call votes is because we're virtual. We uh -huh. didn't have to do roll call votes when we were in person. Speaking of which, well, let's, before we vote, are we, are, are, we're staying, uh, we don't have to talk about this now, but I'm just wondering if the day is going to come where we have to go to the municipal building again. Um, but I don't know, Nathan, if you know anything about that, because oh. this is... I, I actually don't know what the state's this thinking is, about uh, remote meetings. I, I sorry. I okay, I that's fine. I, yeah. I'd like to leave okay. it this way. It's so convenient. Yeah. Um, so maybe not for the public. Well, it is for the public. They don't have to schlep down to city, you know, downtown either. So okay. So uh, we have a motion, a second. So now a roll call just on the motion to adjourn the meeting, please. Yep. By roll call, David. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. And Maureen. Yes. Yes. All right, that's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thank Welcome, you Aaron. So Welcome, <laughs> Aaron. Take care. Have a good couple of months, everyone. You too. Bye-bye.